Hello, my name is Adam Vokte, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Pycnonomosaurus. Now, just so we are clear, this video are going to focus on solo play, but due to the nature or just how the Pycnonomosaurus are built, I will also talk about the benefits of being in groups. In this video, we'll be going over the following topics. Stay to the end to figure out how you can suggest a specific creature you have in mind. In terms of abilities, there aren't too much new stuff uh, compared to the last time, but I'll cover it anyways. For head abilities, we have two slots, so we can equip two abilities, and we have three options. The first one is the standard bite that causes medium damage, and are actually pretty good. The second ability is head buff. This ability are definitely faster compared to the last ability, however, it has less impact. Horn Swipe causes heavy knockback, however, it uses stamina. Furthermore, due to longer cooldown, it can be used for rapid shots. For senses, you have Lone Hunter, to make your health feel better if you don't have any friends. For leg abilities, you have three options. The first one are gripping claws, that help you increase your turning circle. The second ability are basically ACR. Don't do drugs, kids. I feel like Strong Legs was made to counter Pycnos, so if you were to use this ability, wouldn't that be quite ironic? Also, for the creatures that can do bone break, I'm pretty sure they will kill you before the bone break wears off, so I, I don't really see the need for this ability in that regard. The back limb ability are basically a charge ability. This ability makes you forget all about self-preservation and you run headfirst into danger. For tail abilities, you have three options. The first one are armored tail. Anything that plays with your tail will have left of an impact. Your tail is protected. The second ability is a normal tail attack. This causes knockback and are uh, kind of useful in some situation. The balance tail increases your turning and is probably the best ability I can recommend for tail ability. For voice ability, you have Bulldozer. This ability increases your knockback potential. This also doesn't use too much stamina and it can be stacked. What's more, it also works if you are solo. These are the abilities I recommend to be your standard arsenal. Of course, if it doesn't suit your taste, then you can always change it. For why I chose long distance runner and balance tail on tail ability and leg ability, well, I will show you guys why in the example fights later. As for why I chose the head abilities as it is, well, that is due to the fact that this is the best combination that Pikno can have. You see, despite being part of the dino family that I refer to as meat eating bull, well, yeah, despite that, the Pycnonomosaurus are surprisingly fragile, at least in this game. When you charge in towards an enemy to attack them, you also put yourself in the range of their attacks. This is where the combination comes into play. Hitting them with a knockback after a charge is a good way to create distance. Again, this video are focused on solo play, and if you're gonna play solo, then I recommend the stamina recovery subspecies. Most of your abilities, at least those that do significant damage, cause stamina to use. This is also why team play as a Pycnonomosaurus are highly recommended. If you do not have a teammate, it will be difficult to gain the chance to recover some of that stamina. The extra attack knockback subspecies can also work, however if you utilize the combination of the head abilities I showed you earlier, then you should be able to make do without it. You would think that, as Pycnonomosaurus are more of a runner and a track star, you would think that large open planes would be the best for it. While not untrue, I would say that it kinda depends on what you're fighting. In most of your fights, I would say that you would be the one to run around, which means for larger creatures, you're gonna need more space to be able to move. Against smaller creatures, however, I would say it's the opposite. As for fighting style, I think it's clear that the Pycnonomosaurus are better suited for hit and run. Now, I know I said that closed off areas would be better against smaller creatures, but that doesn't mean that large open field doesn't work at all. If you find yourself bounced, I would first try to see if I can counter attack by either hitting them with tail or a bite attack. If not, just try to buckle them off. Pycnonomosaurus are probably one of the only mid tiers that can actually give a proper chase. It has enough speed, and if you have invested in turning circle, then it has the locomotions too. Again, 
in an area with hindrances, they might get stuck in the environment. That is when you must seize the chance. You don't have too much to fear against solo low tiers. When they are in pack, however, that is when you should be worried. When it comes to mid tiers, this is where it becomes a bit more complicated. If you were to meet a lower class of the mid tiers, then you should be able to defeat them in a head to head contest. The lower class of mid tiers shouldn't be too much of a problem. The higher class of mid tiers, however, is another story, especially those that are made to brawl. Low tier to low class of mid tiers is where you can do a head to head clash, anything stronger than that, and you need to switch to hit and run. If your enemy has a charge ability, try to attack them while they're in their cooldown. Mid tiers of this class is a bit over 50 50 chance of winning. Okay, maybe 80 20 to them. Even if you were to run them out of stamina, they will still force you into a head to head clash, which you do not have the advantage in. Taking a defensive stand is the best way to fight a pick though, so you would be fighting a losing battle. Which brings us to our biggest problem, literally. <laughs> Of course, there is one strategy that you can utilize to perhaps win any battle with Apexes. Guaranteed? Mm, that is up for debate. This is not a strategy you should rely on, especially since it requires so many perfect circumstances. Like I said earlier, against Apexes, you'll be the one to do the running, so you will need a lot of space to be able to do that freely, and without worrying getting stuck on the hindrances. However, even if we do know the best suited terrain for the fight, does that mean we should? Wait, no, the real question is if we even can kill an Apex as in solo with Pycno. The fact that the developers has apparently nerfed the charge ability doesn't help either. On top of being fragile to damage, well, this is not a good combination. If you want to play a Pycno and you want to tackle Apexes, it will be in your best interest to group up with another player. And while your friend distracts the enemy, you can recuperate and then join the fight later on. With the extra help, you'll be able to fight bigger games, at least far easier than you would have been able to as a solo. So to summarize, against low tiers, if some of them tries to pounce on you, first see if you are able to counterattack them. If not, then just buckle them off, and when they are off you, attack them while they are low on stamina. Technically, low tiers to low class mid tiers, that's when you can do head to head clashing and win. It is when you face something stronger than that, that's when you should hit, switch to hit and run. For apexes, do the hit and run strategy, but try to at least recruit a friend or two. If you have a specific issue you want me to cover, go to my community post, find the most recent post regarding the matter, and all the information should be right there. With that, I thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye! It was at this moment that he knew.